Hi! Today we're going to continue our discussion of the integumentary system by talking about some of the derivatives, so some of the parts that are in addition to the skin. And we're going to focus on the glands. You have two main types of glands, sudoriferous glands and sebaceous glands. Let's talk about sebaceous first because I bet that that will be more common to you. So sebaceous glands secrete a substance called sebum, more commonly known as oil. So this is the culprit if you have, you know, greasy hair, oily skin, it's because your body is secreting sebum. It's actually a good thing. We need sebum to protect us. Here is my sketch of the skin. That top part right there is the epidermis. This bottom part is the dermis. We'll get a different color going over here. We'll have some blue hair follicles coming out today. And then this will be my orange sebum gland. It's like connected to the hair follicle. And then also connected to it is a special little muscle called the erector pili muscle. That is the muscle that's responsible for goosebumps. So that red muscle right there is called the erector pili. It basically pulls on the hair follicle and it causes it to stand straight up. And also a byproduct of that is it causes the sebum to squirt out. The sebum is good because it helps make our skin a waterproof barrier. And it also contains like a bacteria side that's able to help us from getting infected. Now, the other side, sudoriferous glands. That is a fancy word for sweat. Sudor means sweat. And there are two types that we're going to talk about. So we're going to break we're going to break our sweat glands down into eccrine and apocrine. When you think of sweat, you're probably thinking of like, you know, wet armpits, sweaty forehead. You're thinking of your eccrine glands. So these are glands that are found all over the entire body, and their function is to help us maintain our temperature. That's referred to as thermoregulation. So when we sweat, it helps cool us down, because when the sweat evaporates, it takes heat away with it. So eccrine glands, they're small, they're found all over the body. There's a lot of them on our foreheads and on our palms. You can relate that to having a sweaty forehead and sweaty palms. And they secrete just plain old sweat, so like salty water. Apocrine, you might be less familiar with. These are only found in specific regions. In your axillary region, which means your armpits, in your anogenital region, so genitals. They are large and they do not function in thermoregulation. Their function is to produce kind of like a sexual odor like a musk. And I'm not saying this is good for humans, but in other animals it could have helped kind of attract mates. So, lovely. And um, they secrete sweat, so like that same salty watery substance but they also have biomolecules inside of them. So it's a mixture of sweat and fatty acids and proteins. So far, nothing we've written on the board smells, <laughs> which I know is weird because we're talking about sweat. So sweat from your eccrine glands that cools you down, it's like just water. It never smells. However, we mentioned that the apocrine glands are able to create kind of like a musk. That happens when the fats and proteins are broken down by bacteria. So, you're not dirty, there's nothing wrong with you, but all of us have bacteria in our armpits and our genitals, and when the bacteria break down the fats and the proteins, it causes body odor. By the way, don't put your armpit deodorant on your genitals, it's not made to go there. Um, okay, I want to ask you if you have any questions right now, so email me if you do, and then let's finish by, we're going to divide apocrine even further into two other types of sweat glands. So I'll just rewrite that, because I kind of lost my thing. 
here is apocrine and then apocrine can be further subdivided into mammary glands probably familiar with those and ceruminous glands. Are you familiar with platypus? Cute little animal, lots of funny characteristics. They are famous because they are said to sweat milk. Here's a picture of a platypus and uh, these are its two little babies and it's suckling. So a platypus does not have nipples. So like there's no place for the platypus to latch onto. Instead, it really just kind of like like sweats out milk. So instead of coming from a nipple, it just kind of comes out on its surface and then the little babies drink it off of it. But anyway, that happens because the mammary glands are modified sweat glands that are able to secrete milk. So technically, boobs belong in the integumentary system, but we will talk about them more extensively when we do the reproductive section. Ceruminous glands secrete a substance called cerumen, aka earwax. Earwax is a mixture of sweat and sebum. You're familiar with it, that kind of like sticky substance. That sticky thing is part of its function. It's able to trap dirt or dust or things like that that come in your ears. You should not clean out your ears. Clean ears actually let bacteria and other things into your body. So keeping them there helps you out. And yeah, one other thing. I want to go back up to our drawing of hair and I will add an eccrine sweat gland so that you can see it. The eccrine sweat gland has um, kind of like a coiled surface down here and then it would come up here through a different pore. So when we talk about pores on our face, like I have big pores on my nose, we're talking about the pores where the sebum comes out right next to the hair follicle. That's like a, that's like a pore when people say pore. But ecker and sweat glands also have their own pores. They're just too small to be seen, but they're the places where the sweat comes from. Thanks for listening.